What's up, guys? Coach Jonathan here for episode eight of the OYL podcast. Excited to be with you guys. Excited about the topic for today. Uh, cool thing about doing it solo today is I can kind of walk through a process and, and, and dialogue with this process and, and help you guys out with it. And today we're going to talk about how to start for the last time. You know, we all know that there's things that we want to be doing that we aren't currently doing or things that we've tried to do and struggle to keep doing them. And that's what this podcast is about. Uh, it's also about how to help coach people through this stuff. Because when we talk about this process today, it, it's going to help us have better focus. Uh, so what are we actually paying attention to? What are we actually trying to achieve? And putting our energy into the right things. And then how do we build it into our lives so that it's a part of our lives and it's not just something that we stop, start, stop, start. So whether you're someone who wants to change something or you're a coach trying to help people change, this is for you. So uh, I have this concept that I like to talk about called stacking the deck. What I like to do is figure out how can we like dramatically increase the chances of success? How can we stack the deck in our favor? A lot of times we just think about just do the thing, just put more effort, put more effort. I'm all about effort. However, what I like to do is ask what what can we do to increase the likelihood of success so that when we're putting effort into something, it's built for success long term? So that means, you know, looking at it from a, a higher up view and thinking about it a little bit differently. So we're going to walk through how do you start something for the last time? How do you begin a thing or build a thing into your life or get back into a thing that's important to you, but it be the last time that you begin? the last time that you're starting it so that you're not on what you know a lot of people call the yo-yo. So before we get into the process, the biggest problem I see here is most people are focused on their current results, all right? So people are very focused on where they're at and how they're not happy with that. Now, that's a cool thing if it helps you change. Like we want to recognize where we're at and ask ourselves, hey, is this where I want to be? Okay. Some people will just suffer through stuff and just accept it as normal. So if you get to the point where you're like, hey, I'm not happy with my current results, we can do something about it, right? Now you're aware and you're like, hey, I don't want to be doing this anymore. Okay. However, if you're just focused on your current results and you just want to be alleviated of your current results, you will tend to get caught in flashy things um, that are designed to help you believe that your current result is your problem and you just need to change that current result and then you'll be happy, okay? So like lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Sounds cool, but the problem is your belief is that, oh, well, once I lose this 30 pounds in 30 days, then I'll be happy. And so what that propels you to do is do whatever is asked of you. So like, you know, whatever kind of crazy diet or exercise plan or whatever lifestyle it prescribes, you're like, oh man, my current, my current results I'm getting, I don't like. And if I get the result of losing this 30 pounds, then I'll be happy with myself. But I mean, we talk about this all the time. Once you get that result, then what, you know, the field goal post is always moving. So it's like you get there, but then you're going to want something else. Like that's a fundamental thing of human behavior is that we're always going to want something to change. And so whenever we get caught up in this thing of like, oh, well, if I just get that 30 pounds off, then I'll be cool. Well, you're going to do it, then get there. You're going to want something else, but here's the actual problem. So, okay, say you get there. What are you going to do when the 30 days is over? Like, are you going to be able to continue doing what it took in those 30 days to lose the 30 pounds? Most people don't consider what that 30 days, like the things done in those 30 days to achieve the result how that would be able to be sustainable in their life. So they're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to sprint, get this 30 pounds off. Okay, great. Well, on day 31, are you just going to like breathe, breathe a sigh of relief and be like, okay, cool, that's over. I'm going to go back to how I was living. The problem is those behaviors you were living in got you to where you didn't like your current results. So if you just do 30 days, get the 30 pounds off, but go back to the same thing, nothing actually really changed. Yeah, your body weight may have shifted, but you didn't actually change them. So what's going to happen is you're more than likely going to go back. Okay. If you just all walk around, always focus on your current results, current results, current results. Like what happens is, yeah, you get a better result, but if you don't say, Hey, what are the inputs that I want to sustain over time to keep these results? Then you actually won't change long-term. Okay. So we want to 
instead of just being like, what, what, like what current results am I getting that I'm not happy with? Let's define what success is. So instead of looking at the negative, what I don't like about now, which again, it's okay if it gets you started, but we don't want to dwell on it so much that that's the only thing we want to do. We want to be like, okay, well, what is success? All right. Uh, and the way I like to define this is like, what state do you want to be in? Okay. So results and state, two different things. So like results are, you know, what am I experiencing based on my previous behaviors? State is how do I look at my life and my, my uh, place in life right now? Okay. So like if your current state is I'm overweight, I don't feel well, I'm not able to do physical activities. Those are things that stretch across your lifestyle. Like they're affecting how you live your daily life. So if you said, you know, I'm overweight, I don't feel well, can't sleep, can't do the things I want to do, then a desired state would be, well, you know, I want to feel better. I don't want to be overweight. I want to be able to do the things that I want to do physically without getting out of breath. I want to play with my kids. Like, so that's your desired state. So the, the difference is a result is I just want to lose 30 pounds, but a state is, oh, I have a better quality of life. All right. We need to define that because, again, if you're just stuck in your current results, you're just stuck in the immediate and you're just like, oh, what will I do to get this off? You're not thinking about, well, where do I want my life to be in a year, two years, three years, four years, five years? What state do I want my life in? So we want to get better at that. This takes a little bit of practice. It's sometimes a little difficult because a lot of the world around us is built on, okay, here, do this to lose 30 pounds or do this to, you know, just whatever the thing is it's presenting a thing and it's like, oh, just do this method and then boom, you're going to be better. Well, instead, let's start thinking about, you know, what do I want my quality of life to look like? A little difficult if you've always been looking at current results, but what it's going to do is it's going to help you actually decide what's really important to me and what am I willing to build into my life so that I continually stay in that state, all right? Because that's what's going to make you better like 10, 15, 20 years from now is chasing a state, like like a con being consistently in that, uh, like having those abilities or having that um, you know ability to live your life in a certain way. That is what's actually going to give you what you want out of life. Just losing 30 pounds, all that's going to do is give you a little feeling of like, oh, now I'm 30 pounds less. But like, if you were miserable for the 30 days doing it, then like, are you going to live the rest of your life miserable to keep that 30 pounds off? Most people it's not. So notice how the psychology here, like if you're just chasing a negative, like a not current result, very hard to sustain. But if you're ch chasing a desired state and you experience it, now you have something positive that you want to keep in your life, right? So we want to define success in terms of our current, of our desired state. What state do we want to be living in? All right, then we need to set standards. All right, so if you're not focused on current results, what do you focus on? You focus on inputs. I kind of already said it. People who are very successful are more focused on inputs than they are their current results because they know that their current results are the result of their previous inputs. Okay. So if you don't like your current results, it's because of your inputs. So you're just getting what the systems you're living in are designed to give you. So if you are overweight or you don't feel well or you don't have the physical abilities that you want or you feel like you quote unquote let yourself go, you are experiencing the results of the systems that you live in, okay? So if you're not happy with it, you need a new system. So again, not just get the 30 pounds off, but how do I lower my body fat percentage and keep it in a healthy range? That's the type of question you wanna ask. And then underneath that is, what are the standards or the inputs that someone who has a healthy body fat percentage range lives up to on a regular basis? Okay. So most people, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They think about the method. Okay. What workout plan, what supplement, what meal plan, right? That those are all methods though. They're cool. But if you're just focused on the method, you're not focusing on the behaviors that actually lead to where you want to go. So like you'll do the method for a while, but if you get tired of the method or you feel like it's quote unquote not working, then you're going to leave that method and then go to another one. So, so you're focused on the wrong thing. You're focused on the things you're doing. You're not focusing on what are the things I need to build into my life. Okay. Cause all humans usually have enough willpower to do something for a short period of time. But again, like what happens when the 30 days is over? 
Are you just going to breathe a sigh of relief and go back? Because now like, you're like, oh man, that was so hard. That was such, so much mental energy. That was so much energy to do that for 30 days. I'm just going to chill. Like, I hope you see how that's problematic. Like I can just do this for a little while. I can suck it up for a little while. But like what happens when a little while is over? Like, aren't you doing this because you're not happy with your current results and you want to change that? Why would you want to do something that you're more likely to stop doing and then go back to the way you were and just get back into the same current results that you don't like? All right. So that's where, that's, that's where a lot of people get stuck. They focus on the method. They don't focus on the standards, the inputs. What are the things that are consistent inputs that lead to where I want to go? Okay. So, we want to define standards in terms of something that you can repeat. Almost everything that leads to a current result is a consistent input. So eating a certain way, living a certain way, not doing physical activity, um, not investing in relationships, finance. This goes way beyond health and fitness. I'm just drawing that out, but we're really talking about working out here. Like the things that lead to most people's desired state is is a consistent input. It's not just something you do once. There are certain things you do once, but like it's actually the repeated behaviors usually behind that single decision that lead to what you want. So we wanted to find standards that you can repeat. So if you go ask someone who's living out a desired state that you like, so someone who is a, is relatively physically fit, you know, they're in a healthy body fat percentage range, they seem to have, you know, the physical abilities that you would like if you ask them like, Hey, like what, what do you do on a regular basis? They'll probably tell you they work out four to five days a week. All right. That's the input. You'll, they'll probably, they may tell you the method, but like really what they're trying to tell you is like, Hey, you can do whatever you want, you know, but four to five days a week. Uh, that's, that's the, that's what I do. I just make sure I train four to five days a week without question. That's a standard is they live by that standard of I am the type of person who works four to five for works out four to five days a week, makes it happen and then does that over a really long period of time. But here's the cool part, because they're not like extremely tied to avoiding a current result, they're less likely to yo-yo because when they get 30 days later, they're not necessarily searching for this. Oh, I want to get this 30 pounds off. They're searching for, oh, I worked out four to five days a week for the past four weeks. So now they're looking at success in terms of their behavior, not the results. Funny part is the results tend to come. But again, they're focused on the inputs. They're, they're doing everything they can to focus on the inputs. Go back to the method thing. If you just get a meal plan or a workout plan that's for a month or something like that, you're so fo hyper-focused on the thing that you're not, you're not paying attention to how can I make sure that this keeps happening. How can I build this into my life so that this input is a constant? It's a part of who I am and what I do on a regular basis, and it becomes normalized for me. So uh, this is going to address behavior, not just your willpower, okay? So earlier I was like, hey, man, like so many po people are focused on grinding and all that. I want to stack the deck. So if you want to stack the deck, you got to ask these types of questions, all right? So you want to work out. All right, cool. You want to lose that weight. Cool. Well, guess what? We need to figure out the inputs that lead to where you want to go. Cause I actually don't want you just to lose the weight. I want you to keep it off. If that's really what's healthy for you, I want you to keep it off. So, you know, you define standards that you can repeat. So working out a certain amount of times a week, what do we do once we do that? Well, we want to create intent to implement. All right. So we want to build this into our lives, this behavior thing, this thing that we're going to consistently do. Now, I used to think that people got stuck on this method thing and not the behavior because they just didn't want to do it. But now what I'm starting to realize is like, I think people just believe methods are the way. Like you just got to have the right method, the right workout program, the right diet plan, the right supplementation. And those things help like getting a more optimized one is always better um, like having a workout program that's adapted by a coach for your current fitness level and gives you progress, um, you know, viewing nutrition as a way to fuel yourself as opposed to restrict yourself. Um, those things are super important. However, I think just the biggest thing is people just think those are the ways to success. But this whole building these systems of intent are, are uh, the, the systems that are repeatable, the standards that you live by is actually the real way to succeed. And so if you can kind of wrap your head around that of like, 
Stop looking for methods. Look for repeatable standards. What is That's the thing I need to address. Then you'll actually get successful because now you're going to be focusing on the thing that leads to what you want. So really, it's the habit of showing up to the gym in this scenario, working out. Okay, now you create a specific intent to implement, all right? So that you're going to define when, where, and how much. That's location, time, and frequency. Dude, mad studies have been done on this. If you define where, when, and what you're going to do, you're like 90% more likely to do it. We talked about stacking the deck, right? 90% is a lot. So if you define the location, the time, and the frequency, the when, the where, and the how much, dude, you're so much more likely to succeed. So we want to start with that. This is giving you an eye into like when I do intros at the gym, like I talk through some, talk through this, like, Hey, what do you feel like you could do sustainably every week? And someone's like, well, I don't know, three days. But then they're like, well, I feel like I need to be here five. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, let's start with three. What days are you going to come? Okay. Well, I'm gonna come Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, cool. What class time are you going to come? Okay, cool. I'll come at 6 a.m. All right, sweet. So now we just set the intent intent. Where is the gym? We're already sitting in the gym when we do the intro. When? 6 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. How much? That's three days a week. Okay, so we just set the intent. Now we implement it, right? But here's the thing. What's the actual thing this person needs to get better at? Okay, going back to the method thing. I'm going to do this workout plan. I'm going to do this diet plan. I'm going to do this nutrition plan. Like people get focused on that, right? Well, here's the problem. The inverse of that. If all that's you're ever looking for is that, you're also like in this mindset where you're waiting for the perfect nutrition plan, workout program, supplement for you. Like you're like, I'm a special snowflake. I need the right thing for me. And so you'll put that in as a mental blockade for you ever taking action because you haven't found the right thing yet. You haven't found the right fit yet. Like you're always like, oh, I need to do this thing. I need to make it for me. Like I need to, I need to investigate more. I need more information but it's actually just keeping you from action and you're not looking at the actual problem that you have. Cause here's the deal. Do you need to figure out a workout plan that's perfect for you? If you haven't been to the gym in 13 months, probably not. You need to figure out how to consistently get in the gym. That's your actual problem is that that's the foundational behavior and you're not even doing that. And you're, you're spending all your time looking for a perfect workout plan, but you're not even implementing any workout plan to do it. Like, like it's putting the cart before the horse, but people will do that. People will be like, Oh, I need more information. I need to understand. I need to know this thing. It's like, no, you don't. You need to get started and actually make progress by changing the right behavior, which is showing up. So when you define it, the when, the where, the how much, and then you actually start doing it. Once you do that for a while, then we can talk about programs. Then we can talk about those types of things because unless you have a bedrock of showing up, it's very hard to test a program anyways. So if you just do it for like a shorter period of time, like it's not actually testing properly whether or not this is going to be a correct lifestyle thing for you anyways. So actually the thing is to adopt the lifestyle that will lead to long-term results and that's working out three, four, five days a week. So you name it and all of a sudden now we're going to try to hold ourselves to it. And so we need two things to hold ourselves to this intent uh, implement implementation intent, like the when, the where, and the how much. First, you need feedback. Do you know if you went to the gym or not last week? Okay, cool. How many times? What days did you go? What days did you not go? Right? That's feedback is to be able to look back and ask ourselves, did the thing happen? You know, with this is, we see this a lot with nutrition. Like we'll ask people like, well, how's your nutrition? Pretty good. Cool. What'd you eat yesterday? Uh, they don't have a feedback loop. They don't have a way to know that they, they're, they don't have a system and they're not following any type of system. And so they have no, no way to even understand that they don't have feedback. Okay. When you start journaling or you have a coach who's asking you what you eat or you have a measured way to eat, now you have, you can have feedback because you actually have something to look at and say, are you doing it Right. But then you have the repeated habit of asking if you did it. Okay. So like, let's say you're going to go to the gym three days a week. You just need a checkbox system at the end of the week, Friday night. Did you go three days? Checkbox. Cool. Do it again next week. Did you go three days? Not only made it two. Okay, cool. Why did you not make it two? Or why did you make the third one? Oh, well, because I had something come up with my family and we had to go to the hospital to check on them. Okay, cool. All right, uh, what day are you coming next? Oh, I'll be back in on Monday. Okay, cool. You show up Monday, back on the loop, right? Like, so, because a lot of people think 
Oh, it's don't miss. No, it's like you got to have feedback to make sure you stay in this on a regular basis. Most people just won't check. They just live day by day. Remember, current results focused. That's just like, oh, how I feel right now. Like, I don't feel good about my current results. Well, the same thing happens when it comes to showing up to the gym. It's like, well, hey, I don't know if I feel like going today. I can just go tomorrow. There's no feedback in that system. There's no specificity. Whereas when you say, I'm going to go three days a week, I'm going to go on these days. Well, if you don't miss the day, the feedback is, well, I didn't go today. What day am I going to go next to actually make it? Notice how that creates even more specificity in how you're going to get back on track. If you don't have this, it's very difficult to keep moving forward. It's very, very difficult. You're just living on how you feel and your temporal memory. You're not living on a system that's trackable and repeatable, okay? Then the other thing is accountability, okay? So some way to answer to our compliance or lack thereof. So this is just whatever you want to do. Like you can have systems for accountability or you can have people for accountability. Ultimately, it's all systems. But you can have a gym where like ours, if we don't see you for a while, we hit you up and say, hey, man, where were you last week? Um, another one is, uh, do you have a consequence for if you don't comply, right? So it's like, I only made the gym two days this week. I guess I'm going to go hit an at-home workout this weekend, right? And I say consequence, it's a neutral term when I use it. It's not a negative or a positive. It's just saying, like, what is the thing that happens if I don't comply with the thing I internally told myself I wanted to comply to? Uh, that's where a lot of self-respect comes from is you say you're going to do something and you do it. A lot of people are walking around wanting to do things or saying they're doing it, but they're not following through. And that's where a lower level of confidence and a negative self-talk comes from because it's like you're not doing the thing that you told yourself you're going to do and you feel bad or have a negative poor image because oh, I'm not doing it. But like if you just get on track and get started, that's why when you do it the first time, a lot of people are like, man, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Why didn't I just do that sooner? It's because you're overcoming this negative self-talk and then all of a sudden you do it and you're like, wow, I feel better about myself because internally, subconsciously, you're like, hey, I did the thing, right? So getting on accountability is having a coach who's checking in if you haven't been there or just having a consequence of like, oh man, I only made it two days. Man, I'm gonna hit a quick workout at home this weekend. You do that workout and you feel better because you're like, hey, I, I maybe didn't do it perfectly, but I did comply and I'm moving forward with the standard that I've set for myself, all right? So all of this to bring it full circle, like if you want to change anything in your life, this process will work, okay? Is instead of focusing on your current results, focus on your desired state. Like what, how do you actually want to be living your life, okay? What are the qualities of life that you want? And sometimes it's better to think really long term. So like 30 years from now, what qualities of life do you want? Because a lot of times, honestly, man, that losing 30 pounds in 30 days, that's a status thing. You just want people to look at you differently or you to look at yourself and you think that losing 30 pounds is going to make that change. But actually the thing that will act, make it change is if you change your your state. So like actually how you are showing up in life and like what, what your quality of life is like. If you change that, then you won't even need to worry about how much weight you need to lose because you'll move in the right direction. So You'll start working out. You'll probably start making small shifts to your nutrition. You'll start paying more attention to your nutrition. You'll start paying more attention to your sleep, your recovery. You're going to start feeling better. You're going to start having more mental clarity, all of that. Like it, it, it all comes from chasing the desired state because the cool thing about desired state is you can get, you can be there and it doesn't have to be metric based. Like it can be, uh, it doesn't have to be how many pounds you weigh or like what you can lift on a barbell. It, like it doesn't have to be that. It can be, I'm able to do the things I want to do and live life in the way I want to live. And I may not be where I'm at, but I'm progressing, right? That is what we're chasing. That's a process built life. Like I do these processes because of the state that it creates in my life. And I would like more of that. You just chase desired results all the time, dude, you're going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. So we focus on, or uh, if you just want to avoid your current results. So we focus on desired state. We ask, what are the standards? What are the repeatable behaviors that I need to focus on? Not the methods, none of that stuff. I need to focus on what are the standards? Like what are the actual behaviors, the inputs every single week that I need in order to reach this desired state? And then we need to create specific intent so that we can implement it. When, where, how often, and then we need feedback and accountability. Dude, build it on that, you'll be successful. 
it sounds really simple, right? Sounds super simple to just say, okay, what would what, what I like my quality of life to be? What are the standards of the person who has that quality of life? And then how can I specifically implement those on a regular basis? How can I have a feedback loop so I know whether or not it happened and then accountability to ensure that it does happen or I improve how I do it over time? Because you don't have to have a perfect start, but accountability keeps you moving. So like, for example, you don't make it for a, you know, a week in the gym. You have someone reach out to you and you're like, man, like I had a work schedule change and I had this going on with my kid. Oh, cool. Like, could you come at this time? Oh, I didn't know that was a class time. Like, those things are actually really common. I used to think people just didn't care, but I'm like, no, no, no. Like, people got life going on. Like, you got stressful stuff. Like, you're trying to, like, incorporate this new healthy lifestyle thing. It can be difficult because you're overcoming the normal behaviors you have and inserting a new behavior. Like, that showing up thing is real. We teach people, like, hey, man, like, we got to focus on showing up. Stuff's going to happen. Stuff's going to come up. And that's the behavior we want. We don't need the workout, doesn't matter. Like, you know, how much you lift, how fast you go. None of that stuff matters. All that matters is that you show up. Cause if you just focus on showing up for two or three months and you build that muscle, dude, we can do whatever we want in the gym. But if you don't get that right, nothing else matters. So like we want to dial that in, but people got life going on. And so accountability helps you understand like, okay, cool. Yeah. I didn't make it. Why? Then we fix that. All right. I see this in nutrition coaching is like sometimes people won't be complying. And then you ask them like, Hey, what's going on? It's like, man, I just can't make it to the grocery store. And then you realize, Oh, well let's uh, plan a time to go to the grocery store. Okay, cool. And then we plan it. And all of a sudden the next week's better. Why? Because we actually found the real thing that was going on. So same thing as if you're just focusing on avoiding your current results, you're just going to always be up and down, up and down because you may get a better result, but then you don't actually focus on the inputs or the consistent standards that you want to live to. When you start shifting your focus to like, what's my desired state? What are the standards? What do I actually need to focus on? Dude, you'll have way more progress because you're focusing on the right thing. So if you're struggling on working out, how do you start with like for the last time is you focus on your desired state. What do you actually want out of this? What do you want your life to look like? What are the standards that lead to that type of life? How can I create specific intent when, where, and how often? And then how can I have feedback and accountability to make that happen? I mean, obviously you could come to our gym. We focus on this. The reason we focus so hard on this is because we know this is what will actually change people's lives, implementing it this way. Sometimes people are disarmed when I say, yeah, just come to the gym three days a week. They're like, I don't need to come six. I'm like, no, I was like, you don't have a, you don't have a days per week problem. You have a showing up problem. Let's fix that. And then dude, those people... 12 months later, they're probably coming four or five, six days a week because once you get consistently at three, you know, for three, four, five, six months, adding a fourth is easy. But in that beginning, if you're focused on all these other extraneous details and you're not focused on like, how do I build in showing up to the gym in my life three days a week, you're going to really struggle. So that's why we do it the way we do. So, uh, that framework, that process, you can build that any area of your life relationships. Okay. Here's what desired state do you want in your relationship? What are the standards that someone who has that type of relationship health, what are the standards that they live up to? Okay. How, how do you create specificity with intent? When, where, how much? What are the actions? You know, like when are you going to do them? Where are you going to do them? How often are you going to do them? And then how are you going to have feedback and accountability to make sure that it's going to happen? Okay. Finances. Okay. What's your desired state financially? Okay. What are the standards that someone who has that desired state financially, how do you do that? Uh, where are the standards, the con consistent inputs? Um, how do you create specific intent for that? Like when, where, how much? Like where are the behaviors? How often do you do them? When do you do them? Where do you do them? And then how do you have feedback and accountability to make sure that it's happening and that you keep doing it, right? Like it doesn't matter the area of your life. This stuff works, okay? And that's because we're human. Like th this is how we work as humans is we change behavior. It creates future results, all right? But we don't change it by just avoiding current results. We change it by asking these questions of where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? What are the standards? How do I specifically implement them? And then how do I have feedback and accountability to make sure that they keep moving? So thanks for joining me today, guys. Uh, hit that one on repeat. That's a great one. If you're working through journaling, writing this stuff down, it's a great one to go back through and listen to because some of the stuff I said, the specific examples you'll hear again, um, I, I have people I look, look up to that do this style of podcasting. And these are the types of episodes where like, if you just listen to it a couple of times, as you're looking at one specific area of your life, you'll get greater insight. And then also you might be become, become aware of what, why you're actually stuck. So um, thanks again for listening in um, and we'll be back at it soon.
Talk to you guys later.